Good afternoon. On behalf of State Superintendent uh, Hopsmeister, my name is Debbie Farm, and I am a program specialist with the Office of Federal Programs, and we welcome you to our Title I planning webinar. And today we will be want to talk about the uh, comprehensive needs assessment. So our objective for today is to review the steps for conducting a comprehensive needs assessment and also review some uh, resources to use in planning a school-wide and targeted assistance comprehensive needs assessment. A school-wide program is a comprehensive reform strategy that is designed to upgrade the entire educational program of a Title I school. The emphasis of a school-wide program is on serving all students, improving all structures, and combining all resources to achieve a common goal, which is improving student learning. A school-wide program is made out of three. On this one, I would say a Title I program is made out of three core elements instead of a school-wide program. It's a Title I program. It's made out of three core elements. Comprehensive needs assessment, and number two is written school-wide plan and targeted assistant plan, and three, regularly uh, monitoring and revision of each plan as necessary. Also, a targeted assistance school is a supplemental service program to assist low achieving students. So use this Title I fund to serve only those students who have been identified as most at risk. And there, um, the target assistance school also requires to use multiple educationally related objectives and uniformly apply criteria to identify students. And Title I teachers and administrators ensure regulation are met. And we're going to talk about the comprehensive needs assessment. A comprehensive needs assessment is on organized process for identifying, gathering, synthesizing, and analyzing information into data that can be used to make informed decisions. The five-step process. So number one, step one is to establish a planning team. Step two, discuss vision reform for reform, and step three, create school profile, and step four, identify and collect data, and step five, analyze data and determine strengths, gaps, and areas of critical need. So core planning team, first you gather information, analyzes the data, makes recommendations. This is not a policy make, making committee. This is a school-wide and targeted assistant planning uh, team. This is not a, uh, you get together and, you know, making policies for your school. And the team is responsible for conducting comprehensive needs assessment writing and monitoring school-wide and targeted assistance plans. Also conducting annual program review. There are no set of number of members on the team and every stakeholder should be represented. Parents, parent is not, should not be employed by the school. And there are subgroups like American Indian tribal elders, 
representatives of foster care children and also advocates for active for reserve military families. Sufficient diverse to represent the demographics of the school and community. Planning team activities. You may want to include these group of people in your in when you um, selecting the area of um, their specialties. Group process facilitator, data and assessment specialist, technology specialist, curriculum specialist, student advocate representative, community resource representative, district federal programs representative, and all should be knowledgeable about Title I school wide and targeted assistance school when it comes to asking you you know, if you know it, what's the difference between Title I and Targeted Assistance School, these um, group of people should have some kind of knowledge about the school wide and targeted assistance, assistance school. Planning team members. You can, on the planning team member, uh, the principal, school leader te leadership team, Teachers, uh, we put mandatory there because um, the planning team must include at least a teacher uh, on the planning team. And support staff and parents is mandatory also because on the planning team, the planning team must include at least a parent on the planning team. Community representative and student service personnel secondary school students and minority groups. District federal program uh, administrators also can be on the planning team, on the, um, uh, planning, uh, planning team members. So the first job of the planning team is to clarify the responsibilities for your planning team. So you want to get together and you want to clarify what you want to your uh, plan to, you know, to your school to look like. And how will we involve all of our certified staff in the planning process? And how will we communicate with all stakeholders? So we could, you can, uh, that's your first job is to um, get together and discuss these principles here. And clarify mission of planning team. You're going to develop a timeline for completing the task. So you're going to have to get together and say, we need to complete this uh, um, school-wide plan, you know, uh, in, uh, in a month. So you need to discuss that or, and some may say, oh, we need more than a month, you know, so just be clarified that then you had to just develop a timeline for completing your task. And develop a structure for collecting and analyzing data. That's very important that um, you um, collecting all the data that are um, required on the, on the school-wide and target assistance plan and establishing a means of communicating with all stakeholders, especially teachers and parents. Also develop a school-wide and targeted program vision for your school. Also review your school's site mission and vision statement, and this is an ongoing throughout the fiscal year. So you can just, you have to review your school-wide uh, targeted plan and you're going to make any changes as necessary throughout the fiscal year. It's an ongoing thing. And clarifying your vision for reform, your vision is your GPS system. So it's just imagine your vision is like a, your chief GPS system, what you're going to input in, what you want to um, 
your plan to look like? You're going to say, okay, point one, like destination to where, and, and sometimes, you know, GPS is not correct all the time, so. <laughs> And if you have direction to decision-making process in your school, also vision answer the question, what? Vision is a school-wide school and targeted assistance school is shared and understood by students, parents, teachers, and staff. So you make sure that they're, you know, they're shared and understood by their the people on the planning team. So what is a school profile? A database snapshot that is described the current status of your school. It is, is provide a structure for ongoing data-driven decision making. Also provides a baseline information for measuring progress and accountability. School four five also includes student achievement data, curriculum and instruction data, professional development data, family and community involvement information, school context, and organization information. So you can see we're talking about a lot of data here. So for the in the past we not really talk about collecting data, but um, in the, with the SLA, we are talking about a lot, you hear a lot about the data, everywhere you go, data, data, data. So what data do we collect? So you use the school-wide and targeted assistance program strategies to guide to your inquiry. So you're going to use, so on the school-wide and targeted assistance um, template, you will see a lot of uh, the questions about um, what data do they uh, uh, require or need for you to describe what data that the, the district is using, um, like that. And also include in the um, uh, data that we collect is student behavior and, and attendance and discipline, transportation, parking, stu parking, student, teacher, and visitor, and student facilities like playground, cafeteria, library, and commons area, school physical plan like security and restroom. So all those are data they collect. School-wide and targeted assistance plan strategies is comprehensive data-driven needs assessment. School-wide and targeted assistance evidence based on intervention. Instruction by highly effective teachers. So a teacher has to be highly qualified in the area, subject area that she or she teaches and the grade level. Strategy to recruit and retain highly effective teachers. An ongoing professional development to improve instruction and the use of academic assessment data. Also strategy to increase parent and family involvement. This can be a big thing about parent and family involvement this year and we'll talk about a lot of that later in other, you know, um, programs. Strategy include teacher in student assessment, instruction decision making, and student behavior ma management. Plans for successful student transition. That's very important when they transition to uh, uh, the next uh, grade level. You make sure that the transition is successful. So you don't want to, you know, um, make them um, feeling nervous and having anxiety, going to like transitioning from second grade to third grade. You want to make them feel comfortable. So that's why you want to plan for a successful student transition. Activity to ensure effective and timely additional assistance for at-risk students. 
So for those that are at risk, you may want to, you know, spend more time, you know, to assist them and help, help them to ensure that they're all comfortable with what's going on. And also their coordination of federal, state, and local resources like scaffolding and um, the, the school-wide consolidation of funds, which is Project 785. So what data do we collect? And we're going to talk about quantitative data, existing sources. We collect Oklahoma State testing data, district benchmark testing data, feature testing data, also enrollment and demographic data, student attendance data, even transportation data, and dropout data and graduation data. You're going to hear a lot of data, data, data. <laughs> And also remediation, additional assistant data, highly effective teacher data. We're going to look into that too. We're not eliminating. And teacher attendance data, teacher professional development data, and teacher extra duty data. And also, we're going to talk about the quality of data, which is new resources. The other one is we talk about the, the amount. This one, we talk about the quality of the data. We want new resources. And parent perception surveys. We want student perception surveys and teacher perception surveys, interviews, focus groups, and observations. So, how are you going to manage data? So, who will, who will collect the data for your district? You're going to, you're going to, your planning team is going to be asking the question, who will collect the data? What will be the format of the data? And how will the data be filed and accessed? And how will the data be reported? And who will have access to the data? And what will be your technology needs? Also, data needs to be organized in a format that is easy to use. So each exercise should lead the planning team and other staff members to use the information to make, to make informed decisions. Each exercise should lead to taking action based on the data. And analysis of data. So disaggregate data have gender, ethnicity, special interest, triangulate when possible, three years plus of data when possible, and create jobs and graphs. And look for patterns, themes, and and um, anomalies. And also include Oklahoma State testing data. And analyze the data. Give voice to numbers and perceptions. And celebrate successes. As you go into all these data and you get all these done, they say you celebrate. Identify gaps needs and wishes, make in, inter, in, infer, inferences why, identify priorities and easy gains. Also look at the results by grade, subject level. Is there a change in results across the grade, subject? Look at the results by subgroup. All the results the same at each subgroup category, and look at the results by class. Is there a difference in results of grade level classes? Strengths and gaps. So based on the assessment data, you can ask the you know the 
the team or yourself, what are the greatest strengths? Celebrate your strengths and identify patterns you can use to improve the gaps. And what are your greatest gaps? And so identify your priorities. Identify your easiest gains and be very specific. Meeting documentation. This is something that I want to um, mention if you are being monitored this year. You may in, um, make sure that uh, the meeting documentation that you have for the Title I meeting, you, want, you may want to save these, uh, the documentation on a flash drive or on a, a folder on your desktop because these will be, um, we will be asking for the documentation on the monitor, monitoring, uh, consolidated monitoring tool. So when you, um, documentation evidence, we need to have an agenda, science sheet, evaluation form, meeting notes, a minute, Photographs or video, if applicable. Also, side Title I committee meeting, meetings recommending Title I school programs. So, all of these, I think all of these will be um, asking, we will be asking for these documentation on the consolidated monitoring tool. The side meeting with staff to secure support for Title I school programs. And Title I school program informa informational meetings with parents. All core planning team meetings. And all Title I program planning meetings. So when we ask for the Title I meeting on the consolidated monitoring tool, if you are being monitored this year, these are the documents that you need to have you just save it so you have it ready. So things to do next. So you're gonna write your vision for your school-wide and targeted assistant schools. Set parameters for your needs assessment. Start the process of collecting, organizing, and analyzing assessment data. 